Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to bring you this video about tone production and color on the guitar. All the pieces that I mention today or play or reference are available on the Tonebase website where you can learn more about them. You can learn how to play the pieces in depth from various different guitarists. Um, and the link is in my description down below as well. So we're gonna move on to a different piece, um, which is a good example of when we might want to change sounds quite quickly um, in terms of like color. And this is Variations on a Theme by Mozart, Opus 9 by Fernando Saw. If you know this piece, you'll kind of probably know that the variations, they kind of differ quite a lot in character, but overall, I think that they're all quite sarcastic and tongue in cheek and not really like insanely serious. So I think it's really good to make the most of that where we can because we're not often presented with music that we can sort of take the mick out of a little bit. And this piece is a really, really good way to do that because it's such a great piece, but it also has sort of really cheeky moments in it as well. So I'm gonna take just the beginning of the second half of the third variation, just for now. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I might play it, so. So that's just the beginning of the second half, but you might notice that that bit actually repeats twice. So it's a really short, really short little section, but because it repeats, you don't really necessarily just want to play. I mean, it sounds fine, but there are kind of, even just in that tiny little passage, there's so much that you can do with it. So I'm gonna play the first time with a very straight right hand wrist and see how it sounds. So. Okay, so that sounds quite thin to me. So it's not normally my natural playing position. My hand is quite sort of turned down to the floor in a way. So the second half, might be if I angle my wrist a bit more. So to me, that sounds more like my natural kind of tone in a way. Um, but it's good to have sort of an in-between that as well, because if you're always playing sort of with a quite angled wrist, then sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to differentiate when you actually want to make a quite a warm sound. So I'm gonna just play how I might play that um, in context. And then we're gonna go over sort of um, three or four steps that take you from the first time I play it to the second time I play it. So. So the first time I played exactly what's written on the page, no rubato, no taking time, not really any accents, even though the F double sharp does kind of scream out for an accent. Quite a straight wrist. So it sounds very straight, all of it. And then when I play it again, my right hand wrist is angled a little bit, so we get a bit more of a sweeter sound. And I might roll that a tiny little bit, depending on if we have time in context of the piece, we might not, but for now, we might, we really, really wanna put emphasis on the F double sharp. So I angle my wrist a little bit more, roll that chord, potentially, put more emphasis on the F sharp and take more time. So it all sounds quite subtle when you sort of incorporate it with the first time. So you go. I know that this is a very, very small passage of the overall piece. I mean, it's a 10 minute piece and this is, you know, about a six second passage, but it's a good example because it, within the six second passage, it does repeat. So, so the first time, So I'm gonna take you through exactly what I changed from the first to the second. So the first, I played exactly how it was written on the page. No extra time, no rubato, no vibrato, no, no anything really. I had a very straight wrist. So I had a bit of a thinner sound as well. And then when it came to the second time, I angled my right hand wrist a little bit. I rolled this chord, which you necessarily don't really have to do because you might not have time in the actual piece. But 
I put a little bit of vibrato on the F double sharp. So the because you're accenting it anyway, because it's it really does stand out, so it screams for an accent. Only. And took a little bit more time there. But in context, when you play them both side by side, it might not kind of scream that I did six or seven different things within that. It's just what I find um, a lot of the time that happens is that you feel like you're putting loads more effort into perhaps the second time and you think, I'm going to take more time, I'm going to do vibrato, I'm going to, I'm going to put emphasis on that note, I'm going to roll that chord. And then, you know, you put all that sort of emphasis on those things and it just comes through when you actually play it. Because a lot of the time you might feel a little bit self-conscious about playing all that and it might seem a bit extreme. When in reality, from an audience perspective, if you can make a difference between those two things, they're going to notice it. And if you really, really emphasize it, then it will come across. But if you kind of like hold back a little bit, a lot of the time it doesn't come across. So especially with a piece like this, you can just go all out. <laughs> so it goes on from there. So I'll play the rest. So we have, basically the rest of it is kind of just a pattern of sort of tension resolution. So the chromatic um, scale that goes down to the G, so it resolves in the G. And then seventh chord that resolves into the A major. So you wanna, you wanna emphasize this one and then diminished chord that goes to the E major. So if we're gonna talk about tone on this, I feel like you still want a really, really good tone, especially on the top string, because it can be quite difficult to make the top string sound in a, in a like, quite a warm way. So if we're gonna emphasize the diminished chord, that's gonna make way for us to get a really, really sweet sound on the E major that follows it, so. Really nice as well as you can add some vibrato to that to kind of like round off the sound a little bit. And then if you can get a good tone on the, with your A finger, rounds it off really, really nicely. So between the two different sections of each variation, you might want um, a bigger difference in color. So this example that I'm doing now with the, you probably won't have time to change the color too much because that is within the sort of, sort of four bars or something. Um, and it's all within the same half of the variation. So you might decide that you just want a really warm sound for the first half of the variation and then, you know, Ponticello, or like quite bright for the, for the second half. So if we just use that example quite slowly, you can get a really, really big difference by actually changing from Ponticello to Tasto. So let's start with uh, Tasto. So you do get a much more like bigger variety of sound. So that's also an option, but I definitely, um, I definitely look at doing that between the different halves of the variations as opposed to bar by bar because it's more like gymnastics on the guitar trying to move your hand up and down. I hope you found this video on tone production and colour on the guitar useful. Hopefully um, you now know a few more ways to get the most out of the guitar. You can get so many different sounds out of the instrument that I think it's really, really important to know um, like what it's capable of, basically. And yeah, all of the pieces that I mentioned or played, you can learn more about um, on the Tone Base website, which is in the description below. You should check that out. And I will see you soon.